Hi, good morning. I don't know if you can tell, but I tested positive for COVID. <laughs> Ugh, I hate my life. <laughs> I thought that this was gonna be right up my alley, but it totally isn't. So yeah, we have a positive COVID test. Let me tell you, I basically did not sleep yesterday. So I felt like shit. And also my mental health is really not great right now. So I thought it was all because I had been sobbing the night before that my brain felt that shitty. I also had a little bit of like, well, not really a cough, but my throat also didn't feel like normal. I literally did like the four drops in here and it immediately, like the stripe on the T, like it immediately showed. Quarantine, yay. And I'm not feeling too bad, luckily. I took a shower, I took in some medicine because I do have, like my symptoms are a headache, like a very heavy head. It feels really foggy. Like I cannot really concentrate on anything. A little bit like my muscles in my back and stuff like that. But I am always stiff, usually as well, so I just don't know if that's COVID or if that's just my usual neck and lower back problems because I'm a grandma. <laughs> so I feel like luckily COVID will not be too heavy for me. I am so grateful for that and I think that the vaccine definitely helps me battle it as well. So in order to keep myself busy, I guess, I thought let's do a little reading being productive vlog because I really, really needed to do some schoolwork. I'm currently following like an advanced statistics course and I hate it. I hate statistics. I think it's so boring, but I have been neglecting my schoolwork for the past two weeks. And then I was like, this week I'm gonna be productive. I'm gonna like get shit done. And then the universe was like, COVID. <laughs> Let's add a little bit of spice. We're interrupting this video with a word from today's sponsor, Book of the Month. Okay, perfect timing. I received my book of the month books and they are also the sponsor of today's video. Let's open the box. Okay, this is exciting. I need more stuff like this during quarantine. <laughs> and I've heard it's actually a really great remedy for COVID. So if you didn't know already, book of the month is an online bookish surface, which is perfect for every single reader because their team of hundreds of different books and they make a selection each month of like new releases, debut authors that they are gonna feature. Usually they had five picks each month, but from March on, they have been able to like extend their range because their subscription is doing so, so well. This month for March, they have seven selections and it might like change a little bit per month, but I'm just so excited that you will have more books even to choose from. And they offer like the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You do need to know that book of the month only ships to US addresses. I know it's such a shame. Then someone in the comments asked me like, why do you get sent the books? Well, it's because of our successful collaboration because of you guys clicking the link in my bio and using my personal coupon code, my special code, that they want to keep on working with me. So if you use my code Sabine, you will be able to get your first book of the month book for just $9.99, which is an absolute steal. I'm sure that every single month there will be something in there for you that you would like. And even if you don't, you can always skip a month. The book of the month is risk free. Let's give you a quick overview of all of the books that they have here for their March selection. I don't know which one is in the box, so let's see. This one actually really Really piqued my interest. This is The Cartographers, written by Peng Shepard. When her father turns up dead in the NY Public Library, a disgraced map maker has to find her true north ASAP. Next up, we have The Verifiers by Jane Peck. Family drama, dating app woes, and artificial intelligence. Oh my. This sweetie debut novel has something for everyone. We have part memoir and part literary true crime. Tell me everything by Erica Cruz. An unforgettable, thrilling look at the life of a private investigator working to uncover evidence for a historic case. This one intrigues me a lot. I think I will love this story. It's called The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. Take a cruise with your estranged dad, they said. It'll be a fun, not at all awkward bonding experience, they said. Then we have The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. A perfect read for every true crime fan who suspected they might just get to the bottom of things better than the pros. Okay, the last two picks, I think these will be very, very popular. This one is called 
Dating Dr. Dill, and this is their romance pick. The Taming of the Shrew, remixed and remade. Can a love averse TV doctor and a hopeless romantic spark an unlikely romance? And then the last one is from a really quite popular author, and that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Sometimes you visit the city of lights and the vibe is just off. You know what I mean? Looking at you, neighbors. Thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. And oh my gosh, all of these books actually sound fantastic. Like I said, use code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99. What are my plans for today? I think for right now, I'm gonna read some in the book that I'm currently reading. I'm actually like also reading that book for a separate video, so I don't wanna give away too much of my opinion. And that is a study in Charlotte by Brittany Caval Cavalero. I have like, I think two hours left of my audiobook. This is a Watson and Holmes reimagination. And I love Sherlock, like the BBC series. I love that so much. And I know, ooh, maybe I can watch that right now during quarantine, that you have a Sherlock Holmes movie as well with Robert Downey Jr. And I've had this book on my shelves for so, so long. And I am currently filming a reading booktubers underrated faves video. That's what I'm filming. So I don't really want to tell you my opinion. I won't. Okay, I won't. <laughs> I just want to read something else. <laughs> on Thursday. This morning I woke up with a super heavy head again, but I took some medicine and then I felt way better. And besides that, I've just done a lot of like business emails. I have, what else have I done? Taxes. I've done some things for taxes, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> and I hung out with my mom and my dad because they got COVID too right now. So I have a super exciting meeting in like 30 minutes. And I don't know if I can tell you with who I'm meeting. And after that meeting, I will give you a little reading update and we'll do a try a chapter section because I have to figure out what I want to read next. And I, I just, I just don't know. <laughs> okay. I... <laughs> I honestly don't know what I want to read because I feel like I can choose from either one of these six options Which is not a very limited choice. So I feel like I have three different categories here So I have like murder mystery psychological thriller I am doubting to pick up the Paris apartment because I know that the literally dead book club from Books and Lala is like reading this and it's been such a long time since I've like read a book for a book club the other one that we have is a YA murder mystery and that one is called All These Bodies by Kendar Blake. I got sent this copy from Penn Macmillan and I was so interested in this one. To give you like a quick little ambiance vibe of what this book is about, it says a gruesome killer, 16 bodies completely drained of blood, one impossible explanation. Then we have more of like YA contemporary dealing with I think more heavy subjects. So we have The Miseducation of Cameron Post. This takes place I think at the end of the 1980s, beginning of the 1990s. It is about Cameron Post whose parents have died and now she's staying with her aunt but she is also gay I think and her aunt is not very welcoming of that. So it's her dealing with homophobia and discovering herself. Then we also have The Unsinkable Greta James which was just in the book of the month box. And then two more like adult fiction with heavy subjects. I either want to read Such a Fun Age by Kaylee Reed. When Amira is apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping the white child she's actually babysitting, her employer Alex resolves to make things right. She begins a crash course that will upend everything they think they know about themselves, each other, and the messy dynamics of privilege. It is very popular. I've heard great things about it. And another one that initially really intrigued me yesterday evening when I finished reading Charlotte Holmes is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This one has a really intense subject, which I, I don't know if it's really my subject that I like to read about. It is like a teacher-student relationship dynamic, but I feel like this one will dive deep into it 
and it will be very heavy. Vanessa Y was 15 years old when she first had sex with her English teacher. This always makes me feel really uncomfortable. Now the teacher, Jacob Strain, has been accused of sexual abuse by another former student and a journalist has asked Vanessa to contribute to a story about him. But no one seems to understand that what Vanessa and Strain had together wasn't abuse, it was love. I feel like this is just gonna be really interesting. But also it's gonna probably make me feel quite uncomfortable, but it will also make me think, if you know what I mean. This book was the author's debut novel and it like exploded, it became so popular. So I'm gonna trust my feelings and make a little bit more of a selection out of these six because I cannot really like read six books as first chapters because that will take me quite a long time. So my feelings say read a bit of My Dark Vanessa. I think I also wanna try and read a chapter of All These Bodies, just because I feel like I'm in the murder mystery vibe. So I might also try to read The Paris Apartment because I would really like to participate in the book club reading situation. I will give you my first impressions of the first couple of pages, the first chapter. I don't know where to film because the lighting is so bad, but I read the first 10 pages of The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. First of all, short chapters. Second of all, multiple POVs, which I do actually quite like, and the audiobook is available on Scribd, and they have a cast of characters. So you have all these like different voice actors who portray the, I think five or six different POVs that you will get in this book. So I really quite like that. And until so far, Jess is the half sister of Ben, and she, for some reason, I think she just left her job under less than ideal some constants. What am I saying? <laughs> under less than ideal circumstances and she's going to like visit her half-brother Ben who lives at this really like fancy apartment in Paris and she's kind of like why does he even like live here how is that even possible but he goes missing three hours before she arrives and I feel like all of the do you call that tenants all of the people who are also living in the apartment are suspects of his disappearance it intrigues me I'm like not blown away by the first 10 pages but it has a lot of pros if I look at it from a very practical angle. I think right now I'm gonna read all these bodies. Oh my gosh, the lighting. As you can tell, it's a little later. I made some dinner and I read the first two chapters of all these bodies and I am intrigued. I am intrigued. I also didn't know that this story was gonna take place at the end of the 50s, which I actually think is such like a cool time period. How this all starts is, I think our main character is actually a 17 year old wannabe journalist called Michael. And basically our main suspect for like these bloodless murders is 15 year old Marie. And she only wants to tell this very like impossible story, impossible explanation of the 16 bodies and all these murders to Michael. I'm having a good feeling about like actually picking this one up. Like Paris Apartment, I liked, also sounded good, but this one has my attention a bit more. But I still wanna give my dark Vanessa a go and see how I feel about that. Maybe it will surprise me even more than all these bodies, but I doubt it. A few moments later. I don't know what to do. This is honestly a mood reader at its finest. Okay, I read the first 10 pages of My Dark Vanessa. It is unpleasant, uncomfortable to read about, but I feel like this will be a really well done exploration of like long-term abuse in like a student teacher relationship, like our main character. She was 15 at the time when she had a relationship with a 42 year old teacher. I don't know if I can give you some of the quotes to make you understand how uncomfortable it makes me feel. I don't know why I want to voluntarily put myself through it, but it's just because I feel like this book is executed so well, or at least if I believe it from like other booktubers or like critics reviews. You were so insatiable. Insatiable? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Strain says, that firm little body. Ooh, and he's like going off on it, you know? So Vanessa Y finds out that her ex-boyfriend, like the teacher, is being accused of abuse with one of his other former students. And she doesn't want to believe it. She doesn't believe it. And she tries to like stand up for him. These two are so different. So like I said, the true mood reader in me just wants to like read these two right now at the same time. I just, I don't know what to do. 
I don't know what to do. I think for right now I'm gonna read all these bodies just because the whole like bloodless murder, a bloody girl standing in between the dead people really quite intrigues me. Good morning. I wanted to give you a little reading update, but oh, okay. I lost my book, but I found it. <laughs> so yesterday I found out something about this book and if I would have known it before picking it up, I probably would have never picked it up. So, okay, can I put you down somewhere? Okay, you're on my bed right now, so I hope the sound is okay. But I am currently on page 105. Until so far, like, I am intrigued. It's very slow, and the writing feels quite dry. I don't feel attached to any of the characters. I would like to get to know more about Michael, our 17-year-old wannabe reporter, and to know more about, like, his personal life. But I feel like this book will, like, just focus on the mystery of the bloodless murder and about our 15 year old suspect I have a feeling like that will be kind of like a downfall with this book for me and although it like takes place in the 1960s I have to say you don't really notice it too much Michael has just started interviewing Marie so hopefully we will get to know more stuff soon the audiobook is really good though and it is also on script but what I found out and what I wanted to tell you is that I think this is the lowest rated book that's on my TBR and I'm currently reading it. <laughs> I added this book to like my currently reading list on Goodreads and it said it had a 3.33 out of 5. And like if you think about it, that's a 6.6 .6 out of 10, which isn't too bad. But usually when I see that a book has a rating which is lower than a 3.8, I usually don't really am like too excited to pick it up because that often means that I won't really enjoy it. But I guess that this might also be kind of like a, a learning curve, a learning experience for me. Like don't give up on a book too soon, even when it has lower than a 3.8. And like I said, if you think about it, a three and a half out of five stars is still a seven, which is quite high. Maybe Goodreads makes us too biased or how do you call that? I have no clue. But let's read some more in this book. This book was a complete waste of time. <laughs> I just finished all these bodies and what the hell did I spend my time on? Honestly, the only thing that kind of pulled me through was the audiobook and at some point I was just like, I don't care anymore. I just don't care. Maybe slight spoilers, but like very, very slight. The thing is, I thought that this was gonna be a psychological thriller murder mystery, and I thought that we were gonna figure out how these murders went, but we ended up without any answers, plus some unexpected paranormal elements. I mean, this is quite the spoiler, but it's just like so badly executed that I feel that it's okay that I'm gonna share it, but if you don't wanna listen to it, skip the next little bit. This is a vampire story, and it's like, not even like well explained. It's just, oh no. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad because I was just so intrigued by the first 50 pages and like by the whole premise. But if you do not have like any big clue to reveal and just like, I don't care for any big characters, nothing has really worked out that well. I thought that this was gonna be right up my alley, but it totally isn't. So goodbye. <laughs> I think I would give this book like a, two and a half out of five stars. Like nothing is revealed. What is the point of the story? What is like the big thing that we're working up towards? It felt like it was like super randomly revealed. It wasn't even that great of a reveal because this was just not what I expected it was gonna be. But luckily I've been able to go outside. I've been on a ton of beautiful walks in the past couple of days because the weather is so, so nice and I'm out of quarantine. So thank you so much for being here, for spending all of that time with me. And don't forget to check out Book of the Month. Use code Sabine to get your first book for $9.99. Link is in the bio. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.